nightly tomb on a coaster? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I take the standard 4 inch MDF coaster and draw around it on polystyrene. I then cut out the shape with my hot wire cutter and grab the tomb or sarcophagus. Uh, this is a 3D printed one, but there's lots of similar stuff available in kits in various ranges. I cut the polystyrene horizontally in half, then trim half an inch from around the edge to give it like a stepped effect. You can do the cutting with a regular blade, but this is quicker. I then layer up the um, layers. Here I use Geek Gaming's Fast Dry Basing Glue with a dab of hot glue to hold everything in place as the basing glue dries. I mix up some Geek Gaming modelling compound, hashtag not sponsored, and slap it down to smooth out the transitions between layers. While that dries, I mix up some water PVA um, mixture and sprinkle some herb flock, followed by a spray with isopropyl alcohol and then give it the beans with the water PVA mix to seal it all down. Once dry, it's ready to paint. Howdy folks, this is Autumn Witch, just popping in to say thank you for coming to Bleeding Tree Gaming. We are a group of hobbyists based in Nottingham, and we produce miniature painting and terrain tutorials, hobby news and gossip, along with hacks and tips from our combined decades in the hobby. If you like our content, please consider liking and sharing this video, and hitting the subscribe button. It would really help appease the almighty algorithm. Now, back to the video. So it's had a zenithal spray with rattle cans. I then stick some army painter orange and green on my palette and begin to stipple it on. The reason I thought doing coaster terrain would be useful is that I love terrain, but it is everywhere in my house. MDF discs are cheap to buy and these ones have a diameter of only 4 inches, making them easy to just pop on a shelf out of the way, but they still look really cool on the tabletop. I then add a turquoise or turquoise or whatever into the mix. Don't worry, these will be toned down shortly. I then heavily watered down the three paints and added a black shade paint. This gives a super organic dirt look to the sarcophagus as I slather it on. If you fancy having a go at this, we would love to see what you come up with, so find us on our social media, it's all listed below. Starting with Vallejo Wolf Grey, I give the sarcophagus a heavy dry brush. Yes, my brush is knackered, but I have replacements in the post. I then use Vallejo Dead White for a lighter dry brush. I do the same on the areas of exposed rock. Nurgle Green Dry Paint is next, which I use heavily over the flocked areas and stipple in less well covered areas. Finally, to tie it in with my other terrain in this project, I hot glue lichen to hide any imperfections and add an overgrown look. I use the handle of my brush to press it into the glue because burning my fingers is not fun. And there it is. It can be used as an objective marker, a scenic centerpiece, a plot driver or just an interesting piece of scatter terrain. If you want to see more of these easy storage terrain ideas, we have more coming up. Make sure you subscribe to be notified when they come out. Take care folks and I'll catch you next time on Bleeding Tree Gaming.